Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Jordan and welcome to JC's Anime Reviews. And today I'm going to be talking about the currently serializing Talentless Nana manga, as well as the anime series that uh, recently started. It's about nine episodes in and it's still airing, but I haven't seen a whole lot of people talking about this anime or anime or manga. And I think that it deserves more recognition. I think that it's actually pretty good and I think more people should check it out. So that's the main reason why I'm making this video because I think more people should check it out because it's actually pretty good. So first off, let's talk about the plot. Talentless Nana takes place in a world where people have superpowers called talents, and there's an island with a school on it where kids who have superpowers go to train to use their powers in order to defeat these dangerous creatures called the enemies of humanity. Then one day, a seemingly nice girl named Nana is transferred to the school, and she tells the whole class that her talent lets her read people's minds. And the first episode kind of seems like a very basic anime. It almost seems like a ripoff of My Hero Academia, just like slightly different, until the end of the first episode. So at the end of the first episode, Nana kills one of her classmates and it's revealed that she's actually been sent here by the government in order to secretly kill the real enemies of humanity, the kids with superpowers. Because in the past, people with powers have caused a lot of death and destruction. And Nana doesn't actually have the ability to read minds, but she has to pretend like she does with her deduction and psychology skills. So Nana has to not only pretend that she can read people's minds, she also has to secretly kill all the students on the island. I'm definitely not the first person to make this this comparison, but Talentless Nana feels like a combination of Among Us and My Hero Academia. My Hero Academia because the whole superpower school thing, and then Among Us because the kids have been told that the enemies of humanity that they're supposed to fight that actually aren't real have the ability to turn into anyone, and they think that there's one hiding among them and is the one who is secretly killing all the people. So they know that there's some person among them that is not to be trusted or is the imposter, basically. So yeah, it, it's weird. It feels like a combination of My Hero Academia and the game Among Us. That might not sound like a good combination, but surprisingly it works. Those things put together actually make a pretty entertaining anime. Probably what works really well about the whole concept of her trying to secretly kill all the people with powers is the fact that she doesn't have any powers, so she has to find a way to kill these people with superpowers while she doesn't have any, and it makes for some really entertaining scenes where she's trying to figure out what their power is in order for her to find out what their weakness is and then to eventually kill them, and it's actually really entertaining and I think that that's a really great thing in this show, like, I think if she had powers it would have ruined it or made it a lot less interesting, I think the fact that she has no powers and has to find a way to defeat these people make it really interesting and really entertaining. Another character I want to talk about is a student who arrived the same day Nana did named Kyoya who's kind of smart and suspects that Nana has something to do with the disappearances and murders that are happening. And I like Kyoya. I like how there's someone who's suspecting her of killing these people and is almost like getting in her way at times because he's suspecting her and is suspicious of her. And I thought the interactions between them were really good and I really like them. The only thing that bothers me about Kyoya is that he's really smart and seems almost like he's a detective. And I don't really have a problem with that itself. The thing that I have a problem with is that they never explain why. He's just smart and is figuring out stuff or guessing certain things that Nana is or did and he's guessing them almost completely correctly, although he doesn't have enough evidence to prove that it's her doing it, but he guesses almost everything that she's done. He's guessing a little bit too perfectly and, like, is really good at deducing certain things. And there's even a scene where he does an autopsy on a body to figure out how they were killed, and it gets to a point where he's just, like, seems so smart. Even though, how old, he's like 17, 16, 17, and they never explain why he's this smart. It's fine, I'm sure eventually they'll explain it. Even me, I've read uh, all the manga so far, and they still haven't explained it. That's the only problem I have with him, is that they don't explain why he's so smart, and why he's like, basically a detective. I don't know, I hope we get some sort of explanation that makes sense. Something as simple as like, maybe his dad was a detective or something, and that's why he's so smart. I would have been happy with. I just feel like they haven't explained it yet, and I think they need to. I'm sure it will get explained eventually, but that's like one of the only problems that I have with him. Speaking of problems, I do want to mention one other problem that the series has, and that problem is that it introduces characters a little bit too often. Characters get randomly introduced, 
and the reason why we haven't seen them the whole time is that they just ditch school a lot and that's happened like three or four times where characters just pop up out of nowhere that we have never seen at all and they're just they explain it away by like oh they were ditching school the whole time that's the only thing that bothers me like right now in the most recent chapter of the manga i liked where the characters were at i liked the progression of the characters up till that point and they had introduced a decent amount of characters that i liked and we kind of got to know some of them and then they just randomly introduced some random student who just shows up out of nowhere and they're like, oh, he ditched school a lot. That's why I never saw him. And it kind of bothers me. I understand why they do it. They try to do it to keep it interesting and maybe like mess up something with Nana's plan. And then she has to come up with a new plan or do something else. And I get why they're introducing new characters. It's just they keep doing it and it gets a little bit old because I like the characters that they have. And then when they keep throwing in more characters like over and over again, it gets a little bit old and there ends up being a little bit too many characters. I don't know. That's the only problem that I really have with anime. Besides that, it's really good. And probably my favorite thing about Talentless Nana is that as the story continues and the more people she kills, you're not entirely sure on which side is right. So on one hand, there are people that Nana kill that seem kind of evil and seem like if they were kept alive, they would probably kill a lot of people or cause a lot of destruction. But then on the other hand, you have characters that Nana will kill that actually seem really nice and seem like nice people and seem like they wouldn't really do anything. So throughout the story, I found myself asking the question of which side is right? Is the government right for sending in Nana to try to kill these people with dangerous powers because they could possibly do something really bad with them or kill a lot of people with them or destroy entire cities with them? Or should the people with powers be kept alive and be given a chance because they haven't done anything yet? They're just going in and killing them because they have dangerous powers. And I think it does a great job with making you not side with either side. And I like anime that make you not 100% side with one person completely and how like you can see the other person's point of view and you kind of understand both of them and you don't feel like either person is right either the main character or the whoever they're fighting against like death note is a pretty good example of this you have light who's killing a bunch of bad guys with his death note and you kind of agree with him like he should be killing all these bad guys because they've done bad things and he only kills bad people so you're kind of on his side but you also have l who's trying to stop him because he feels that it's not totally right to just be killing all these people even if they did something bad because like you're not really giving them a chance to change or anything and they're you're just killing them for doing like one bad thing and it makes you not totally side with either side 100% uh, I mean maybe you did side with one person like completely and only agreed with that person while watching Death Note but for me personally I was never really on one person's side 100% like I kind of could see both sides and I kind of agreed with both of them and it didn't have me 100% on light side the whole time. And me personally, I love anime that make me think about which side is right or wrong and not 100% side with one person and it makes me be able to kind of see both sides, like both people's point of views, and I really enjoyed it. I like that you can kind of see, like, the government trying to kill these people with superpowers kind of makes sense because they can cause a lot of destruction, kill a lot of people, but at the same time, I feel like you're on the people's side with powers because they haven't really done anything wrong, and they could I don't know, maybe help people with these powers, something like that. And I feel like they do a really good job with that and I really enjoyed it. So those were the things that I like about Talentless Nana and don't like about it so far. This could change as the series goes on. Maybe some issues could get resolved or some, or there could be new issues. So far, it's really enjoyable and I really like it. And if you think any of that sounded interesting that I was talking about throughout this video, then definitely I think that you should watch it. I definitely think that this is one that more people should be watching or reading. I think that it's a pretty good series so far and I think more people should be talking about it. Uh, I definitely recommend checking it out if you haven't seen it yet. It's really entertaining and I really enjoy it so far. Another anime that I don't think many people are talking about and is ongoing right now is Akuduma Drive. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. But that one's pretty good so far, too. Uh, I haven't seen a whole lot of people talk about that one either. I don't know if I'll make a video on it or not. We'll see. But yeah, just wanted to mention that one, too. That one's 
pretty entertaining one that's ongoing right now too. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video and if you did make sure to give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already and let me know in the comments below if you're watching Talentless Nana and what you think of it so far. Also let me know in the comments any anime that you think are underrated and you don't see a whole lot of people talking about it because I'd like to cover more or watch more underrated anime that I feel like not a lot of people talk about because maybe we'll I'll find some really good ones that no one's talking about and more people should be. Let me know in the comments below any anime that you think is underrated and I would love to check it out. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.